day 34 back on the road yeah baby what a night man i just couldn't sleep i spent the whole night tossing around hearing the town's uh, drunk going back to going back home today it's a special day today i'm heading to the end of the world finisterra day one I've had my peace with uh, Santiago de Compostela. Most of the people that, are, that came along are going home. Only a few are going all the way to the end. This is where I made my triumphant entrance into the square. To my left is the cathedral. Now, where does the path, where does the Camino to Finisterra start? I don't know. It's not even marked. So I ended up asking a cop and he told me, just keep going straight. And so I will. Now, if I could only find a place to have breakfast, but I doubt there are gonna be that many pilgrims for businesses to start opening this early. It's 6, uh, 6.30. Why am I leaving so early today? On a 19K day, which I should be taking uh, lightly. Well, the reason is, it's gonna be a really hot day. It's gonna be about 32 degrees Celsius. Just walk straight from the square, cross the light, cross the little bridge, walk by this wall with the trees, and you'll get to the first marker, which is very hidden right behind this tree. Now what? I think I'm lost. I mean, this the route is not even marked. I just saw that little arrow at the end by the tree. Now it's gone. Not even my, uh, my eagle vision that I have developed over the last 30 some days is working right now. I don't think Santiago wants me to leave. I guess I have to backtrack now. So I'm back on this street. I went right. Let's try left now. Okay, now what? There's not even a mark here. If I go right, I know I'm gonna be back in the same spot where I was before. Left, I don't know. What's this? It's like some kind of faded marks on the floor. All right, let's give uh, left a try. Okay, so maybe this is for the people coming back. So it's probably this way. This is full bar, man. I don't see anything. I'm backtracking my way to the street light. I don't see anybody. I can't even ask a local. It's 7 a.m. on a Sunday. Everybody here is asleep. So, uh... I'm gonna make my way back and see if I see another pilgrim or someone who can help me because I'm completely lost. I probably lost already close to an hour plus like two Ks. Okay, something's going on here. I'm back at the tree and there's no arrow. I mean, there's like a little mark here that maybe with a, with a street lamp, which the light is yellow, it makes it look like an arrow, but there's nothing really there, so I'm lost. So here's what happened. Headed back to the intersection where the light was, bumping to two, a couple from Australia. They had like a little map. We got lost again, <laughs> went back to the intersection. And then we saw in the corner, there was a marker for an albergue. So we headed in that direction, and all of a sudden, all the markers started popping up. Day one, let's do this. After the little morning fiasco, I head out of the city and into the much beloved countryside. At first, I noticed it was a lot quieter than days past. So it was 9.20, 
and the name of the game was finding something to eat. I didn't have breakfast and my last real meal was yesterday at lunch when I had the, the Marisco feast. I had gone through a couple of towns already. My first impression, a lot quieter. There's a lot less people now than even on the first few days of El Camino, Frances. But also there's less infrastructure less bars and places like that so i have my cafe con leche and napolitano at uh, alto de vento which is a little town two hours away from santiago do you know what i also did besides having breakfast i left my walking stick yeah had to go back and get it not leaving you behind now buddy going all the way and I burn you when I get to Finisterra. I need some tinder. Agua pesada was very uneventful. Other than the bridge, it had a bar and a pharmacy. But the pharmacy was closed. It's Sunday. Careful with your feet. Doing a little uh, steep climb through the forest. Nothing that your body hasn't gotten used to it by now. Past the halfway point, I'm like five, six Ks away from, uh, from my final destination for the day, unless something drastic happens. And after this morning, I don't think anything else should. Fingers crossed. Let's keep going. All right, a quick observation. I'm almost at the top of this hill, way past the halfway point, and I have not seen a single water fountain. Maybe I missed one, but it's not like before. There's one here, but that water does not look like it's drinkable. So, thinking ahead, I brought 1.5 liters with me today. You can always stop at a bar and ask the bartender to give you water from the tap. Now, you didn't think I was gonna forget, right? I know it's been a couple of days, but it's back to the routine of El Camino with my little flower of the day. Almost done with Carballo. Towns are just rolling by one after the other. Where are we now? Transmonte. 11 o'clock, too early for lunch. <laughs> so I have about 100 euros left. If my budget stays the same, about 30 a day on average, that's three days. I'm gonna be here about four. So that means that I'm short. And since I've noticed that the infrastructure here is not the same, I need to look for a bank. A mere 8 kilometers from Santiago is the charming village of Ponte Maceira. This magical place was quite a surprise as it came out of nowhere with its extraordinary architectural and natural beauty. This ancient bridge from which the village takes its name dates back to the 14th century. Much of the original medieval structure remains after the vast renovations that took place four centuries later. The bridge, with its five Gothic arches, is the site of a local legend, a tale of divine intervention when disciples of Santiago's were chased by a legion of Roman troops. Was that a beautiful bridge or what? It's been a while since I've seen one like that. Oh, what do we have here? A crusado. Leaving Ponte Maceira takes me away from the road and onto moth-covered woodlands that seems to come out of nowhere following the Rio Tambre on its way to the Atlantic. I welcome the cool shade under the forest canopy, a brief escape from the scorching midday sun. God, I love the forest. And what do we have here? Another bridge. This day just keeps getting better and better.
All right, I'm gonna go for it. Probably a bad idea. There he goes. Going up a little hill. I must be getting close already. Finally made it to town. It is 12.30. I gotta stop waking up at six. Especially for this leg of the trip. Now I could do something crazy and go an extra 5K to the next town. That would be 5Ks that I don't have to do tomorrow on a 27 kilometer day. But I don't know. I don't wanna risk it. Let's see, let's see. Get in there. This place is packed. I think I'm gonna go for it. I think I'm gonna walk another 5Ks. Probably have lunch here. 12.36, temperature is 33 degrees, but it's cloudy, so I don't feel it. I haven't even broken out a sweat. I decided to have some lunch. Got half, half of a bocadillo and some beer. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave town. I'm gonna walk to the next one. This is too, uh, it's too early. Gotta love this. Uh, these forks in the road. Here I am, there's two, the official Camino and the alternative. They both take me to the town of Sass. One takes 35 minutes and the other one takes 50. Guess which one I'm taking? 35, that's right. Had to get another flower. I lost the little bouquet somewhere back then. You should have seen the faces on the old timers at the bar when I was having lunch. They were like, what is this cowboy looking pilgrim with all the gear from the future with a little flower on his chest? We don't like your kind around here, boy. Close to the municipal albergue just outside of town and next to the Crusader is a hidden Baroque jewel. La Iglesia Parroquial de San Juan with its simple facade and cross-shaped layout was built in 1799. That is a nice looking church. I wish it was open so I could get a stamp but it's closed. What I'm gonna have is the other half of the sandwich because I'm still hungry. Actually I'm starving. Walking through the woods. This would have been tomorrow's uh, first stage. It would have been dark if I leave at six. But I think from now on, I'm gonna start somewhere around seven o'clock. There's a lot less people. Camino is a lot less crowded. I'm sure there's gonna be places to stay along the way. So why rush it? I'm doing it today because 19 Ks is just not enough. I can't get to town at noon. What am I gonna do the rest of the day? I think it's best if you get to your burger somewhere between two and three. That gives you time to wash your clothes, let them dry, take your shower, do your thing. Gotta enjoy this last few days. So the locals are amazing sometimes. Sometimes they ignore you. Like right now, I was in town, looking around, taking pictures. I started going in the wrong direction and I hear this old guy screaming at me. I turn around and he's like, this way. I could have gotten lost again twice on the same day. What's happening? I feel like an amateur. I feel like a, like a tourist here. By the way, I definitely, definitely have the Camino all to myself. I think uh, everybody's staying the town behind. Uh, I could be wrong, you know. Sometimes you think you're on your own, you stop, 
for a little break and a few people walk by. It's 2.30 and it looks like there's an albergue five kilometers away. That's not bad. It's probably less than an hour, even half an hour. The terrain is flat right now. That is a little freaky, huh? don't you think? Crosses in the middle of the wood. So I have a choice to make. Just made it to Alto de Pena. There's an albergue about 100 meters that way. Or I can keep going 3.5 kilometers to Vilacerio and stay there. What should I do? What do you think I should do? Tell you something, I'm feeling great. Let's go for a walk. You know, that's the that's what's so great about having a rest day. Your body will thank you for it. Even though at the time I feel guilty about taking it, the day after, whew, I'm flying low. I didn't even put Vaseline or tape on my feet today. One point five liters now gone, and not a water fountain in sight. Bring water, people. Villa Cedo is definitely an interesting town. It has a ten percent off sale on every item in the stores. It has a wall hung guy, and it also has snakes. Or did I read that wrong? Hmm. I reached the small village of Vilaceiro later in the afternoon, somewhat tired after walking 15 kilometers longer than I had originally planned for the day. So I got to the albergue at four o'clock. There's only two other guys in there. Got the bottom uh, bed. Uh, I got my stamp and an orange juice, took my shower, feel brand new, and guess what? I ran into the German guy again. <laughs> took him two days to get here, did that in one. Now let's see what this town has to offer, which by the look of it, not much. So the sun came out, so I'm gonna wash my clothes, take advantage of it. Clothes are almost dried. I already have my dinner. I had uh, the mixed salad, glass of wine, and some coffee and milk. Now, today I went a little overboard, and uh, here's the proof. 34 kilometers to Santiago. That's what I walked today. Uh, I don't know, I was firing on all cylinders. My legs were doing fine. I didn't feel anything until like the last few kilometers. And that's because I was walking on asphalt on the street. Uh, it kind of feels like I'm in overtime. Yesterday and the day before at Santiago felt like the end of the trip. And now, if I keep this pace, I'll reach uh, Finisterra in the next couple of days. It's, uh, it's time to uh, call it a night. See you guys tomorrow. Another day in El Camino, one day less.